And with that, let's move on to a very special uh, someone. This is Amy. If you're a member in our Studio on Plus community, then you might know that Amy yeah. is one of our most active members there, helping out everybody in any way they can. And um, it's, it's just incredible um, the amount of knowledge that they provide. And yeah, I, I think I think uh, it's it's super important to have Amy as a part of our community. And they also submitted a song today, which is My Soul. And um, I think we even we even had one of their songs in our song production critique once. And I can't wait to see what they produced ever since. So without any further ado, let's give it a listen. Okay, I'm kind of biased because I <laughs> I'm such a big fan of Amy to begin with, and I'm a huge fan of breakbeat and drum and bass. So this is right up my alley. Uh, but the the amount of drive in that piece is just so moving. It's impossible to listen to that and just sit still in your chair, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Also, these super dry drums with these super reverby vocals create the most amazing contrast in my mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Imagine if the drums also had that kind of reverb. The entire thing would just drown in the mud. 
But because oh, of yeah. this stark totally. contrast between the two, which is, of course, quite the artistic choice, it also made the most sense from a production and audio engineering standpoint. So, yeah, I, I, I really one... enjoyed it. Please, Joe. I have one thing I would change if this was my mix. I'd go back and say this is just one change I want to make. Can you play the like the the fade out, like the last five to six seconds? Sure. You hear how much low end is in that reverb? Yeah. You kind of hear it. You hear it throughout the song, but it's really obvious there. If you go back to go to like twelve twenty and play and what you'll notice is like the music feels perfect like the music is mixed perfectly then the vocal comes in and it adds this kind of rumbliness mm. to the mix that doesn't need to be there well so it's, i think it's the vocal and it's also the reverb so i would eq that reverb and also maybe bring some make the vocal a little thinner because when it comes in it makes everything feel muddy then when the vocal goes away it feels great again so um, true well so spotted good, play it at day. <laughs> Totally, totally, yeah. Could really so, hear that. Um, killer song, though. Yeah, yeah, that was such. I, I'm so glad that you that you mentioned that. I kind of noticed it, but then I then I didn't really reflect on it enough to to bring it to the point that you did. This is such a textbook example of why you would use reverb on a send over an insert. This is one of the totally. most common mm -hmm. questions that we get. Why wouldn't you just put the reverb on the insert? Why would you send to a different new channel where the reverb is applied instead. And that is because on that separate channel, you can have an EQ for the reverb and just for the reverb. So if you're cutting out the lows, you don't need to cut out anything mm -hmm. from those vocals because they also need a bit of that low end to be as powerful as they are here. But the reverb doesn't need yeah. any of that. Um, so. And people tend to say, well, I already EQ'd the vocals, so the reverb won't need it. Nope, reverbs are jerks. <laughs> Common they misconception. They somehow add it back in. Exactly. They add it back in. So, And some people say, well, if I EQ before the reverb, I was like, no, just put the EQ after so you know you're getting rid of. I do like a 200 hertz mm -hmm. high pass filter. Because yeah. I don't need any of that stuff unless if it's like an orchestral thing and I need like the big, beautiful, like, contra bass to like resonate like it would. <laughs> but that's like one in a thousand mixes. So Exactly. Otherwise, get rid of that junk no totally you can be quite liberate actually when you cut out frequencies especially because it's yep. a scent so you're mixing something relative to the original right just like in parallel compression or something like that you have like an overemphasized, totally distorted signal that you mix together with a natural sounding signal and you get the best out of both you mm -hmm. get that pronunciation from that overly emphasized signal and you still have the natural original transients from the audio track and so don't be afraid to cut into these effects quite rigorously and also as joe said mm -hmm. cutting out the lows on the vocal is not enough the reverb is capable of generating something from nothing i mean it's generating a room <laughs> from nothing so of course it can also generate yep, low true. frequencies from nothing just like saturators saturators can also boost low end when there isn't even any low end which is something that eqs mm -hmm. actually can't do like uh, on an eq if you boost lows and there aren't any lows nothing's gonna happen it's one of the fundamental differences between the two 